Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm the Digital Empress, your fave informants in cybersecurity. And you should definitely subscribe if you wanna learn more about the field and you wanna get into this cyber introduction series that I have been planning to get back to since last year. So I'm finally back with the rest of the videos for this cyber introduction series. So if you haven't watched the first episode, which is like cut into two parts, it'll be here. The first episode will be here and then I'll insert the second episode of that. But I basically was talking about malware and how they can get onto your system and how you can protect against them. I got most of the information that I'm, I'm gonna be talking about in this series from this book called Cybersecurity for Dummies by the Palo Alto Networks Company. And this is the second edition. So I decided to create like a mini series off of everything I learned in that book. And it's basically getting you ready for everything you should know before going into the cybersecurity field and um securing a role as a cybersecurity professional these are things that um i was expected to know as a cybersecurity engineer um a lot of these things were things that i was also expected to know being a help desk analysis a system administrator and I highly advise you if you're watching this video to really take notes and to really put yourself in the mindset of a security professional. And this is basically for beginners to get an idea of what malware is, how attackers carry out malware against an organization, and how to effectively protect against advanced attacks. You're also gonna learn about next generation tools and security processes that you should implement in your organization to better help protect us in the future. Because I've learned after reading this book that a lot of traditional security solutions that we implement in our network or in our organization may not be everything that you need to protect you from advanced persistent threats which we'll get into later in the video but you really want to listen to and really take in what I'm teaching you in this course because it's really gonna help you for when you go into interviews or when you want to just have a conversation with somebody about security it's just really gonna help you get in that mindset of like what we think about on the job and what we think about in the presence of an attack this book also gave me a better understanding of things i did, may have not known as a cybersecurity engineer in the corporate world um but now going in as a freelance cybersecurity engineer and somebody who wants to help bring cybersecurity solutions to people with small businesses or you know to their apps these have helped me like fill in gaps in my knowledge and to better help me come up with processes and knowledge for my future clients when they come to me for cybersecurity solutions. The first episode we talked about malware, that was the first chapter. We're basically talking about different types of malware where we're understanding everything about cybersecurity as a whole and why it's needed. We get into the psyche of a cyber criminal and why they ultimately carry out these different types of attacks on companies. So in this episode, which is related to chapter two, we're basically going to be getting into how cyber criminals carry out malware and how they design malware to attack a company or a network. So after we get done with this video, you're gonna have a better understanding of the following, the traits of advanced malware, the cyber attack life cycle and how to limit and counteract threats so like i said before as i'm like going through everything you really want to kind of think of yourself kind of manifest yourself as a cybersecurity professional and really think about what i'm talking about and how you would handle certain issues that i'm talking about in this chapter if you were to be in this situation in your company or in your business. So we're gonna just hop right into the video and I'm gonna start off with explaining to you guys what advanced malware is. So in the first chapter, we basically talk about different types of malware like viruses, worms, rootkits, bootkits, malware working separately 
on their own and not combine together to and target a company in a more mass attack, which would be considered advanced malware. Advanced malware can also be considered an APT, which is an advanced persistent threat. So if you hear me say APT or advanced persistent threat, just know that I'm also referring to advanced malware or targeted malware. So advanced malware usually has like an ultimate mission, okay? Or it has like a specific target that it's trying to hit. And usually the targets are like big organizations. Usually advanced malware, advanced persistent threats are trying to attack the big dogs. They're trying to get as much data, like valuable data as they can so they can sell it, make money off of it, exploit the company in whatever way that they're trying to that's who they're usually going after they're not trying to go after me or you i mean they might but i hope not like you know but <laughs> they're not trying to go after regular users these cyber criminals are trying to hit big companies big ceos like people who are really bringing in the money this type of malware usually tries to infiltrate a network to leverage its power on the network so it does this to try and provide itself resilience on a network to be able to survive you'll learn a lot throughout this series that advanced malware tries to hide itself so that it can get as much data as it possibly can or damage as much as it possibly can it's sole purpose in the way it's designed is to leverage itself to gain power and to be as stealthy as possible on the network so it doesn't get caught. Advanced malware or malware is like any other software application. It has a goal. It, ha it does what it needs to do, like Microsoft Word. Advanced malware has, it's planned out and we're gonna talk about that in the cyber attack life cycle. There's a whole pro process, a whole cycle for advanced malware in regards to the regular malware that we talked about where it's just kind of like going out and you know it may be targeted just to one user or it may be targeted to just a bunch of random people just like phishing does well some of the key characteristics of advanced malware are distributed fault tolerance architecture multifunctionality polymorphism and obfuscation like i said um earlier about the malware trying to be resilient on a network that's a part of the fault tolerance architecture it's designed to like if something goes wrong or something fails it's able to result to like another piece of the code of the malware to keep working and keep running multifunctionality it may be a root kit in there, it may be a boot kit in there, it may be a worm in there, it may be a virus in there. It may be a bunch of different types of malware in one to do different things on a network. Polymorphism, we'll learn about that later in this video, but it's basically um, avoiding detection by messing with hash signatures, and we're gonna get into what hash signatures are later. And obfuscation, if you guys don't know or have not seen my video, I have actually done a video on obfuscation. It's basically the hiding of data. In this case, advanced malware is hiding its true nature while it's doing all of what it wants to do on this network, or what it's designed to do on this network. Now that you know what advanced malware is, and how it's designed and what it does on a network. Now we're going to talk about the cyber attack life cycle, which is the process that attackers use to pretty much distribute the malware to the targeted network or the targeted organization. So the cyber attack life cycle has six steps and it's really evolved over the years because of all the new technologies that are coming out all the new applications that are coming out all the updates for security that are coming out it's really evolved to really focus on patience okay you'll start to realize that cyber criminals attackers skilled attackers are very patient okay they don't do things rapidly and quickly they really take their time when trying to carry out an attack and they also 
blend together exploits, malware, and the evasion for more coordinated attacks. So they utilize exploits in technology and organization, different types of malware. Like I said, they may use all types of different malware that we discussed in the first episode in an advanced persistent threat and evasion to like hide themselves on the network while they're just going through and doing what they need to do. This is the cyber attack life cycle. This is the picture that they have in the book. As you can see, the first part of the cyber attack life cycle, I'm not sure if I'm like, um, yeah, the first part is getting unauthorized access. So they have to get in first to be able to carry out the second half of the process, which is basically carrying out everything that they're trying to do on the network. So the first thing that a attacker, a cyber criminal has to do, or a hacker has to do to get in and do what it needs to do, it has to get access first, okay? This doesn't just, they don't just get access, they have to actually plan out how they're gonna get access to the network or the person or the machine or whatever. The first step is reconnaissance. I love reconnaissance. I love gathering information. That's basically what that is. Your girl loves to do her research, okay? But like I said, they first, one of the first ways they get unauthorized access, they have to study their victims, which is reconnaissance. They have to study, they have to research, they have to gain information through social engineering, through phishing, email harvesting. Like they do all of this to be able to gain access, okay? That's why I gave you guys that social media security. Like you have to be very careful about what you share on social media because cyber criminals could be watching you. They could be, you know, gaining reconnaissance on you to be able to attack you and gain access to your network your home network whatever um you just never know and then they go into the second step which is basically developing the malware around whatever information that they've gathered from you to be able to get inside the network so key security lessons and opportunities after you know basically what advanced malware does how it works how it gets deployed, what can you do and what could you think about when you're a security professional? So communication is the lifeblood of an attack, okay? It is it's the backbone. You're going to hear about communication a lot and throughout this series, communication is like the backbone of everything to be able to work it's the backbone for um security technologies to work for security professionals to work together better in a team and it's the backbone of malware getting carried out um successfully so communication communication is key like we say okay numerous opportunities exist to detect and correlate meaning basically what that means is because we know what happens in the cyber attack life cycle and how these cyber criminals are thinking and what process that they use to carry out these attacks there's no excuse as to why us as security professionals shouldn't know how to counteract these attacks so the second one, the framework rather than functionality is the threat. If an attacker can get in and take over your network, that's what you need to be focused on. They can get in and do anything once they have gotten in, okay? So as a security professional, you need to think about that it has control in the first place. So meaning like how did it actually how did they get access into your network in the first place to be able to carry out all of these malicious attacks the fourth lesson is that threats exist across multiple disciplines and so to most security so what that means is applications have threats uh website urls have threats files could be threats like 
anything could be a security issue basically is what they're saying but some security solutions like the traditional ones that we're going to talk about and how like can be a weakness basically when protecting against these advanced threats. Sometimes companies may not have like the latest security or they may not be on top of their game as far as their security structure. So your security must expand beyond the perimeter to include network, endpoint, and cloud environment. So that means security professionals not only need to pay attention to their security inside the network, but you need to pay attention to the outside, which is how most of attacks happen, they happen from the outside before they get in. And we're gonna talk about more advanced security controls to help combat this later in the series. So, you guys now know what advanced malware is and what it does, how the cyber attack lifecycle works. I think that process is so cool. Like that's something that I'm eventually gonna have to get into the mindset of and the psyche of like really study that and know that because when I start pen testing like that's what I'm gonna have to use if you guys want to pen test you're gonna have to know the cyber attack life cycle like the back of your hand and key security lessons when dealing with cyber attacks and malware all right that is the end of video or episode two Comment down below if you guys learned anything from this video or if you have any questions about what we discuss in this episode of the series. And like I said before, if you guys want any more additional notes on this chapter or any chapters that we're going to discuss later in the series, you can look at the notes on my blog post on my website. I also have a link to the book in my blog post if you want to read it and just get a little bit more detail because I am giving you guys a more condensed um, version of each chapter. I'm not really going through all the details, but if you read the book and you go through my notes, um, you'll get a more detailed and in-depth understanding of like everything that I'm talking about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and share with other people that you know that are trying to become very skilled security professionals and who just want to watch cybersecurity content that's not boring. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next episode.